Greetings and welcome everyone. My name is Dr. Laketa Maka. Thank you so much for joining me. Welcome ladies and gentlemen to our session on ecology. This is term one, week one, all about ecology. Obviously this, um, whatever we'll be discussing in this video is not new to you because this is something that you have done in primary school. So do yourself a favor make sure you like the video make sure you share with other people make sure you subscribe if you haven't subscribed if you're new to the channel please i beg you <laughs> subscribe to the channel but if you're a returning subscriber welcome back welcome back the time has started and we got to kick it straight while it's hot happy new year happy starting happy everything great thing you chose agricultural sciences as a subject and trust me you you are going to enjoy it and I'm also happy to have you here. So let's get to it. Basically, on this video, we'll be discussing ecology basics. As I have mentioned, we're going to look at defining ecology, the importance of studying ecology, and basically just the interconnectedness of ecology, or rather of living organisms as well as the environment. So now starting with the definition. Now, what I usually say is the minute you see a word that has the suffix logy, then you need to know that is the study of something. So it's very important with English words to check the prefix as well as the suffix. Then in that way, it makes it easier for you to understand what this word means. So basically, if we look at ecology, we have the suffix, which is logy, and then we have the prefix, which is eco. Now, any word that has the prefix eco, you need to know that it has to do with the environment. Then logy, logy is the study of something. Now, ecology basically is the scientific study of the interactions amongst organisms and they are physical and biological environment. So this is quite big. It, it has a broad sp spectrum from the individual organism to the entire ecosystem, even to the biosphere, right? Now we're gonna touch on that a little bit later. So why is it important now to study ecology? It's very important um, for various reasons. So understanding ecology is crucial for various reasons. One, it provides insights into the relationships between living organisms and their environments. It helps to predict how ecosystems may respond to changes. And it also forms the basis of conservation and sustainable resource management. Now looking into the interconnectedness of living organisms as well as their environment. Now, ecology emphasizes that. It emphasizes the interconnectedness from a small microbe or bacteria or whatever to the largest mammal, right? So it plays a huge role in ensuring that there is a maintenance of this ecological balance. Now, let's have a look at the different levels of organizations. We're going to start from the smallest up to the biggest, as you can see on this diagram. Now, if you look at the individual, right? So an individual refers to a single organism. Then we have species. Now, the species are a group of of individuals that can interbreed and produce fertile spring. So if we're saying an individual is a kudu, for example, or it's just um, a cow or a bull, just one, then it means if we look at the species, then the species will be a group now of cattle, if in this case we are talking about cows. If we are talking about kudus, then the, the species will be a group of those individuals. Now, they can interbreed and also they can produce offspring, right? Then we've got a population. 
Now, a population, these are the members of the same species and they live in a specific area, right? Does it make sense? Then we've got a community. Now, a community is all different population or populations, all the population of different species in that particular area. Does it make sense? Then we've got an ecosystem. Now, an ecosystem will be a community now, right? What did we say? We said a community are the populations of different species, right? Then now with the ecosystem, the ecosystem now is a community and its physical environment, right? Interacting as a functional unit then we've got a biome still gonna talk about biomes different biomes now biomes when we talk about a biome now this is the large geographic area with the similar climate similar vegetation and also similar animal life then we have the largest ecological organization or level Rather, now this is the biosphere. Now, when you talk about the biosphere, this is the sum now of all Earth's ecosystem. Now, this is where life exists. All the ecosystems that are found on Earth, they are under the what? The bio, the the biosphere. Does it make sense? Does it make sense? I hope it does. So now, then we look at agroecological ecology, agricultural ecology, as well as agricultural ecosystems. So now, if you understand the ecology, if you understand ecosystem, then it would be easy now for you to understand what agroecology as well as what agroecosystems are. Now, basically, Agroecology is the application now of ecological principles to agricultural systems. It focuses on sustainable as well as holistic approaches to farming, considering the environmental, societal, as well as what you call economic aspects. Right. Then the relationship now between agriculture and ecology. Agriculture is deeply intertwined with ecological processes. Now, agroecology aims to optimize agricultural practices while minimizing the environmental impact. That is one thing that we need to understand. Now, these agricultural systems, especially when we look at the agroecosystems. Now, these agricultural ecosystems are viewed from an ecological perspective, right? Considering the complex interactions between crops, animals, humans, as well as the environment. So, why now? Someone will ask, why is it important to study this? Why is it important to know this? Why is it important to understand these practices, these systems? So there's something that we usually call sustainable agriculture. Now, the sustainable agricultural practices actually highlight or promote actually the long-term soil health, biodiversity, and the resilience in the face of environmental challenges. Now, you will think about this. This actually shows that the need, the, there is a need to sustain agriculture so that the ecosystems are healthy, um, as well as the relationship that is there is healthy. Now let's look at the components of the ecosystem. Now we've got two important components, right? 
biotic components as well as abiotic components. Now, when we look at biotic factors or biotic components, these are basically living components of an ecosystem. As I said earlier on, when you're talking about ecology, if you want to quickly understand a word, check the, the prefix. So here we have bio, which is life, right? Living components of an ecosystem. Now, these include the producers, right? Keep that in mind. Now, the producers are plants. They also include your consumers. Now, these are your animals. And they also include your decomposers. Now, this is these are the organisms that break down dead matter. Then we've got the second component, which is a biotic component. Now, these are non-living elements, such as your sunlight, temperature, soil, water, and other uh, physical as well as chemical um, factors or components, rather, right? Now, it's very important now to understand the interaction between these two. So as I have mentioned that with the biotic factors, we've got the producers, we've got the consumers, we've got the decomposers. So the producers, which are plants, they play a fundamental role in capturing the energy from the sun through photosynthesis and then they make their own food. Then we've got the consumers. Now these organisms, they actually obtain their energy by consuming other organisms. Right, so they can also be further divided into herbivores, carnivores, as well as omnivores. So they eat other organisms for food, right? Then we've got the decomposers. So these are microorganisms that break down dead organic matter. And why are they important? They also retain the nutrients to the soil, right? Now, let's look at the abiotic factors. Now, with the abiotic factors or components, we've got three major factors, right? We've got edaphic factors. So, these are your soil texture, your soil depth, your water content, your soil fertility. So, it's all about characteristics there. Then we've got climatic factors, which are elements like sunlight, temperature, rainfall, and wind. Then we've got physiographic factors. Now, these are landscape features such as slope, um, such as altitude, and also such as... Aspect. So it's slope, it's aspect, it's altitude. Right. Now, question time. Bo, 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 bo. Now it's question time. So I want you to actually, now before we get to the question time, before we dive into the questions, please note um, that the next grade 10 session will look at how each now of these abiotic factors influence the structure and the function of the ecosystems what is the role of the food web understanding the interconnectedness between the producers and consumers but anyway let me not bore you with all of that it's now time to test yourself so what i want you to do is to look at this as at these questions um, relate them to the topics answer them according to your own understanding, then what you can do later on is to check the answers, then you are done, right? See how clever you are, you know? And I know you're going to get everything right. I trust you. These are not difficult questions. You just define what is ecology, describe what is an agro ecosystem, um, you can also draw a diagram showing the levels of organizations from, you can start from the smallest to the largest, or you can start from the largest to the smallest. It's up to you. You can discuss the physiographic 
factors in an ecosystem. Now also explain how the influence that each factor has on the ecosystem. Right now, remember we said with the, with the physiographic, those are landscape features. Now I'm giving you a hint. Now, anyway, lovers, love and light. Thank you very much, my beautiful babies. Thank you very much, my people. Thank you so much, my tribe. Please don't forget to like, to share, and subscribe to the channel. The growth of this channel depends on you. Love and light. Yours truly, Dr. Lokita Makam.